All right, Mr. Charles, we'll make it simple. TT here again. Welcome to another theory video. This theory video is on Cape Computer Science Unit 2. I hope you learned something. A data structure is a format for organizing and storing data. The data structure you know about most is arrays. Uh, my next data structure is a linked list, and my next one is a tree. Now, when you have a data structure, you could turn it into a different, a particular data type, which is called an abstract data type, right? So, how an array is structured is you'd have array location zero and then location whatever all the way up, and you would kind of switch through the array like normal with like a, a linear switch or some kind of switch. A linked list has a head and then it has something called a node. Each node has info. And then I'll link to another node. So whenever you do a link list, you just have a head and link to another node. And then the last thing I'll point to is something called null. But we'll get further into that as well. When you have data structures now, you could create an abstract data type. An abstract data type is basically taking the data structure and turning it into something that it's not really it's not really that, but you're looking at it from that angle. So abstract data type is looking at something from a particular angle. So abstraction is the process of providing only the essentials and hiding the details. So when you create an abstract data type, you're creating the ability to do something, but you're not showing. You're not saying how you do it. So abstract data type is a combination of a data structure and a group of functions. So when you create a group of functions to act on a data structure, you're creating an abstract data type. So, the major abstract data types that we'll use will be based on arrays, right? So, for ADT to be an ADT, you must be able to hold data, you must be able to add a new element, you must be able to remove an element, you must be able to find an element, and you must be able to destroy an element. So, it's kind of like life. You must have somewhere to live, you must be able to have to people for people to be born, must be able for people to be die, to, to die, sorry, must be able to find people and you must be able to kill people if you need to. That's kind of dark there, but that's just how it is. Um right, so to create a data type, first of all, we could create by creating an array that could hold eight numbers. Cool. Then we could add a new element to the array by doing add. Then we could remove an element from the array by doing a remove. Then we could find an element which will be to search through the array to find whatever number we want. Then we could delete the whole array and make it disappear. And those are basically the five the things that abstract data type should be able to do usually multiple choice questions right so the types of abstract data types that you can have will be stacks queues and linked lists so let's go with the first one a stack stack works like this stack of things last one that goes on it is the first to come out so last in first out is users lifeo so the concept of a stack is this you take an array and you turn it anti-clockwise so you basically take the array and you kind of lift it up like that with the index zero at the bottom right and then the top of it will be the last array right well last value basic basic operations on a stack will be push and pop so when you push, you add a value to the top, meaning you stack it on top. When you pop, you remove a value from on top, which is pop. Then you have advanced options, which will be like peak or is full and is empty. So let's say we have an array that's, um, that's been created and we want to create it like a stack. We push five, five will go there. Push eight, eight will go there. We pop. Um, pop and then the 8 will come out because it will come out from here and then we push 3 the 3 will go into there like that basic stack operations so we won't do that that's too simple how do you write the algorithm for a stack 
well it goes like this first thing you have to do is you have to create the stack which will be in stack which is an array then you have in top which will be minus one why is it in the top to minus one because you want to make sure it's empty Let's see if i can explain that to you right top to minus one um you will see why just now so the functions that are needed in uh a stack would be these functions you could use any one of those functions so let's try to create each function piece by piece right so for is empty function basically you have an array that has five space six spaces zero one two three four and five how do you know when it is empty you know it when it is empty when you set the top to minus one when you set the top to minus one what you are saying is that there is nothing in here there's nothing in there well there's nothing in zero if there's nothing in location zero that means that there is nothing because you have set top to be minus one so top is minus one right if the top is minus one then you're good to go because you could now write the code for it you could create a, a a function cause is is empty is empty doesn't receive anything all is empty is going to check for is is top equal to minus one if it returns one that means yes it is empty so if empty re is empty returns one then you know it's empty if it returns zero that means it's not empty because top is not minus one top is one of these numbers here is full now is going to check to see if top is equal to the highest number so sometimes you'll see five depending on if you know the actual size sometimes you'll see max or the max minus one some kind of thing like that um it could be anything like that but once you know that the top is pointing to the highest possible value that you have then you know it's full so if it is full you'll be like yes it is full because you return a one or else you return a zero peak now would just be to peak at the top of the stack and return what wherever top is at so you could return it and you could see what number is inside there because top would be there to push a value to the stack now you could use the function is full so you say if is full is equal to zero meaning no it is not full you carry up the top by one which means um carry up the top by one so let's assume that you had numbers here and here so that means top was pointing to there what you're going to do is carry up top by one which is top plus one and top will now point to here and once the top points to there then you know okay this space is empty so i'll take the value x and put it inside stack top which will be here the int x is what you got inside um that was passed to the function right and then you'll put the number here so let's say the number that we put is our four four will go inside there just like that else you'll print stack is full because if is full um returns uh doesn't return a zero but it returns a one that means of course it is um it is full so the print stack is full and therefore it won't try to push anything because that obviously means if the is full doesn't return zero that means it returned one and there are numbers all the way up to here so top is up there so therefore you can't actually push something on top there because it's already at its maximum value a pop now will be checking to see okay if is empty is zero that means it is not um yeah if empty returns zero that means um there is it's saying there is something here right it would be basically saying yes there is something here so what you're going to do is you're going to return whatever is at point and at the top so let's say this had numbers five nine four and three and top was pointing to location three 
what you're going to do is you're going to return what is that location 3 which is take the 3 out and return it to wherever it is going to go and then go top minus minus so now the top is going to be here so what's going to happen is that the top was pointing up there but it's no longer pointing there because we took that 3 out so now the top is now there so the next thing that pops will be that 4 if not your last print stack is empty because you didn't get you didn't get a zero um you got a one if you got a one that means it's set. thanks for watching the theory video if you learn something give it a like give it a share subscribe do whatever you have to do and if you want practical applications of the things feel free to check out any of my classes you can find them on my website at makeitsimplett.com i have classes for all different subjects from csec it cape it cape computer science and many different tutorial videos that you could find on this channel so um, thank you very much and look out for the next video that is here or here because I have all the theory videos for all the subjects.